Episode 201 pushed him into despair. Connor tried to control his emotions as he looked up with his reddened eyes. I thought you would at least help me out since we're brothers, he said with a saddened tone. Brothers? Peter smirked in his head. I've never once thought of you as my own brother. You're just too naive, he shouted. We were born to be rivals. It's either you or me who will take over the whole family. He walked to Connor's side and patted him on his shoulder. I'll take good care of our family and the company, Peter said as if trying to comfort Connor. I will prove to the world that you're no better than me and you don't have to worry about the rest of your life. Just sign this paper and I'll make sure you get to enjoy a quiet life. There was another meaning behind Peter's final sentence. He meant that if Connor did not sign the paper, he would make Connor's remaining life miserable. Peter would not take Connor's life away, but he would make sure that he lives a painful life. Take your time to consider my offer, Peter said as he was not in a hurry for Connor to sign it. Send me the paper when you've signed it. I'll take my leave. He turned and put on his shoe. I've always wanted to ask you something, Connor suddenly said just as Peter was about to step outside. Were you involved in the accident that cost me my legs five years ago? Peter could feel a chill down his spine as he turned his head back slowly and looked at him in disbelief. For just an instant, he felt like someone was choking him, making it hard to breathe. What are you talking about? Are you suspecting me? Peter smiled unnaturally. I would never resort to such violence. You have to believe me. How am I supposed to believe you? Connor scolded in his head. You better not let me find anything that could tie you to the accident. I'll give you my answer tomorrow, Connor said as he turned, leaving Peter at the door looking at his lonely back. Peter watched until Connor went into his room before he let out a sigh of relief. Why would he suddenly ask about the accident? Did he find something out? Impossible. All of the evidence has been taken care of. There's no way that he could find anything. After Connor heard the door closed, all of his emotions were expressed all at once. Even a person who was strong in front of everyone else has a weak side. He raised his head as he closed his eyes in pain. His hands were gripping his legs as they shook wildly. He was hurt. He was in utter despair. He wondered why God would put him in such a challenging situation. God had taken away his legs and his confidence, forcing him to live in pain for the rest of his life. He'd lost the woman he loved the most and had no courage to tell her his true feelings. And just when his father and grandfather had fallen ill, the cousin that he'd looked up to betrayed him and pushed him into further despair. There was even evidence that made him suspect that Peter was the person responsible for the accident that took his legs away five years ago. He couldn't believe that Peter would be the person to take his life away from him. He opened his eyes as his heart was filled with despair and rage. He extended his arm and threw everything on the table to the ground. The ceramics and glassware that were on the table fell onto the ground and broke into many pieces. It was as if Connor was possessed as he grabbed a baseball bat and smashed every piece of furniture in his house. Everything that he could see was destroyed by him. He could only release all his anger and pain through crushing things. As he took his final swing, he used too much strength and fell from his wheelchair. Landing himself on the glasses that he had just broken, blood began to drip from his knee and palm. He sat on the ground as he ignored the bleeding. He just sat there, spacing out and in a total mess. It was as if Peter's words had crushed him completely. There's no meaning in living anymore, he thought. So what if I have the world's strongest mercenary group? The noise from room 101 finally stopped. 
Megan was standing on the other side of the crystal door. She'd heard everything that happened in room 101. The only thing she never expected was for Peter to pressure Connor when Arthur and Bernard were lying on their deathbeds. She never thought that the person Connor has been looking up to as a hero would become such a demon. Megan understood what Connor was feeling at the moment. The feeling of being betrayed by the person you trusted. She'd already felt it five years ago. The feeling was more painful than swallowing the deadliest poison in the world. She had heard the frustration he had shown after Peter had left. He had been pushed to his limit and was already broken inside out. That was the reason Megan could only think of such a warm and gentle person to show such anger. Megan was worried about him and wanted to open the door, but she was also worried that her showing up would hurt his pride. The noise of Connor trashing his home finally stopped. Everything went back to being quiet as Megan wondered what had happened to him. After a few seconds of hesitation, Megan finally decided to check up on him. She opened the door, and what greeted her was a house that was trashed. She walked into room 101 and looked for Connor. There he was, sitting on the ground beside his wheelchair. He had one hand on the ground, and his head was lowered. The white ceramics that were broken by him had been stained red by his blood. His broad shoulders were slightly shaking. Is he crying? She asked in her heart. I can't even bring myself to imagine what he's going through right now. All his desperation and sadness. It was as if her heart had also been stabbed. As she looked at the man she loved the most, sitting on the ground in despair, she found it hard to breathe. That was the love she had for him. She walked towards him as she tried to avoid stepping on the glass. Connor heard her footsteps and suddenly raised his head. His eyes widened as he saw who the footsteps belonged to. Why is she here? He had intentionally chosen to come back when the sun was still up, when Megan wouldn't be home. He didn't want her to see the side of him that he was showing at the moment. He raised his hand and tried to wipe his tears but instead that left a trail of blood on his face. He'd forgotten that his hand was already drenched in blood. Don't leave me alone, Connor shouted as he saw she was closing in on him. He tried to block his face with his arm. He was trying to hide his crying face. It was the only side of him that he did not want her to see. Please let me take a look at you, Megan said as she could feel a pain in her heart. The man that used to be cold and emotionless was like a hurt beast, lying on the ground, shaking in fear. I don't need your help. Leave me the fuck alone, he shouted with all of his heart. It was filled with sadness and uneasiness. He was so desperate to hide from her that he'd chosen to curse at her. She felt another pain in her heart as tears began to fill her eyes. Did I step on his pride again? How am I supposed to leave him when he's so helpless now? He saw that she wasn't about to leave, and he tried to get back up onto his wheelchair to hide his embarrassment. Yet, as he tried to push himself up, the broken glass on the ground dug itself into his palm. It was only then when he could feel the pain. He had no idea what to do anymore. He sat on the ground without moving an inch. Her face was already covered in tears, even though she tried her best to hold them back. She quickly dropped in front of him and held him up by his shoulders as she looked straight into his eyes. Their eyes met, eyes that were filled with tears. I've never once pitied you, Mr. Wilson, she said. Only love. She wanted to prove herself by actions and not words. The feelings that she had for him weren't compassion or pity. It was pure love. She pulled his face towards her own and kissed him. Her salty saliva flowed down Connor's lips. It was filled with pain. The sudden kiss made his mind go blank. He held his hands in the air and had no idea what to do. The kiss wasn't deep. She'd only pushed her lips against his as they slowly rubbed against each other. 
It was soft as if his mother was holding him when he was little. He remained stunned even after she pulled her lips away. It was as if the kiss had fried his brain. It was as if he was dreaming. Did she just kiss me? Did Megan just kiss me? Her tears had evaporated from the heat on her face. Even if she'd been trying to hold herself back, telling herself not to act rashly, she'd still kiss the man she loved, as she couldn't hold her feelings back any further. What now? Should I have not done that? Will he get angry? I finished my job earlier today. I never thought you would come back today. She smiled awkwardly as she put her hand behind her head. She was worried that he would scold her. Megan, you... Connor paused. The kiss from Megan was like a wake-up call. He wasn't as depressed as he was before. Hey, is your hand cut? She smiled, not giving him a chance to finish his sentence. You have to get it treated. Come, I'll help you up. Just leave me alone, he said as he pushed her hands away. He did not want to trouble her. There's no way I'll do that, she said. I'm still your personal assistant, and I still owe you money. I'll be in debt to you until I've repaid everything. Megan used her debt as an excuse to shut Connor up. He could only look at her speechlessly. His mind was in turmoil as many things were going through it. He thought that he could never see her again, and yet she was right in front of him, worrying about him, and she'd even kissed him. He was happy, yet sad. He was glad that the contract was still in place, but what worried him was that she might be back only because of the contract and nothing more. Here, try and stand, Megan said as she pulled his hands under her shoulder. He tried, but he couldn't get up, as his hands were hurt and his body was numb from staying on the floor for quite some time. Megan did not give up, and pushed him up with all her strength. Come, you can lie on me, she said while she turned and bent over. I'll carry you to your bed. You don't have to do that, he refused. There was no way he would let himself be carried by a girl. Uh, come on, I have the strength, believe me. She insisted. You have to get your wounds treated immediately, or they might get infected. Connor looked at her back, but still refused to get on it. Megan knew that he would never get on her back and pulled his arms towards her until he was leaning on her. She pushed him off the floor and walked towards the couch. Let me down, he said. He never thought that she would carry him by force. He scolded himself as he was not as light as a feather. He was worried that he might hurt her as he lay on her soft and thin back. Megan knew what kind of person he was. She had to be more persistent, or else Connor would never listen to her. As the 190 centimeters Connor lay on the 170 centimeters Megan, the height and the weight differences were big. She almost stumbled a few times on their way to the couch, but finally got there. Episode 202, Too Close. Megan let Connor sit on the couch as she went to fetch the first aid box. Give me your hands, she said as she kneeled in front of him and looked at him with her head up. She could clearly see a hint of tears under Connor's eyes. He tried to avoid his gaze. He was still wondering whether he was in a dream or not. His heart was hit with mixed feelings, happy, sad, but the thing he wanted most at that moment was not to break the calmness that he was feeling. Megan took Connor's hands and pulled them towards her. His hands were covered in blood and shrapnel from the glass. She could feel her heart being stabbed once again. What would he do if I wasn't here today? Would he just sit there and let himself bleed dry? Megan frowned and bit her lips. She took out a pair of tweezers and plucked the glass away gently. Connor looked at her, his eyebrows frowning as she picked the glass out of his hand. She took out a cotton bud and dabbed it in disinfectant after she'd removed all the glasses from his hands. This might hurt, Megan warned. Okay. Even with her warning, Connor still shook from the pain when the disinfectant went into his wounds. Just blow on it if it hurts. 
Megan suggested as she blew on his palm. Connor was trying to hold back his laughter. Is she treating me as a child? Do I really look that weak right now? Yet, it was as if the warm wind that she blew from his mouth had magic in it as the pain started to fade. After she'd cleaned the blood off his hands, deep wounds could clearly be seen in his palms. She applied medicine on his hands and wrapped them up like huge oranges. She did that on purpose. With his hands wrapped up tightly, he couldn't do anything on his own, even control his wheelchair. She decided to take care of him. She also noticed that his knees were bleeding, staining his gray pants red. Hey, are your knees hurt too? Take off your pants and let me see, Megan ordered. She was so worried about him that she did not care how weird it sounded and tried to unbuckle his belt. It's okay, I'm fine, Connor said as he stopped her. He was embarrassed by the fact that a girl that has no intimate relationship with him was about to help him undress. What do you mean you're okay? You're bleeding. Megan said. If you don't let me check, then I'll have to take you to the hospital. You don't need to do that, Connor said instantly. Then stay still and be a good boy, Megan smiled. He was already speechless on how weird their relationship was. It was like he was the girl and Megan was the man. Megan knew Connor viewed his pride highly and did not take off his pants completely. She pulled him down until they stayed under his knees. His knees had also been scratched by the broken glass as deep wounds appeared on them. Megan remained quiet as she started to take care of his wounds. Just as the disinfectant came in touch with the wounds, she noticed that his legs were shaking a little. Mr. Wilson, does it hurt? She asked in surprise. Yeah, just a little. Connor replied, not thinking about the question much, as he had his whole attention on her. Really? That's great news, Megan shouted, just like she discovered a huge secret. Could it be that your legs are regaining their ability to feel? Connor gasped as he lowered his head and looked at his legs. Megan, try putting some disinfectant on them again. She dropped a few drops on a wound and and he did indeed feel the pain. Megan, he shouted in happiness as he tried to grab her hand with his bandaged hands. I can feel it. I can feel the pain. This is great. This means that your legs are recovering, she said. Do you still remember how you saved me when we were in California? You stood up and jumped after me. That was something Connor had never thought about. Just like when he saved Alice, he did something that he shouldn't have been able to do. It was as if a light had shone through the darkness that he had been pushed into. Connor had no idea how to comprehend the sudden change in his own emotions and could only look into Megan's eyes excitedly. But the excitement only lasted for a few seconds as he went into despair. But it's impossible, he said as he shook his head. The report is out. I have no chance of recovering. Who told you that it's impossible? Megan said as she grabbed his hands. I'm here to tell you that you still have hope, that you can still stand. Look at this. She put down the disinfectant and took out a file. It was the same file that Peter had shown him. I've seen it. Connor said without looking at its contents. It says that I have a zero chance of recovering. Look again, she said and pointed to the number right here. He focused his eyes on where Megan had pointed. The results were different. The report had shown that his bones and nerves were recovering perfectly and that he had an 80% chance of his legs to fully recover. What? How? he asked in disbelief. Why are there two almost identical reports, both signed by Wild? Let me tell you the truth, she explained. This report that I'm holding is the real report. The one that Peter gave you is a fake. A fake? Connor asked. 
Megan told him everything that she'd planned to, since she had no reason to hide it anymore. She told him that she'd found out by accident that Peter was trying to use Wilde to poison him for power over the company. He only realized how close he was to danger after Megan had told him the story. He could feel a chill running down his spine as his heart was filled with sadness. The brother that he believed and had been plotting to take over his position long before he noticed it. It broke his heart. But in the midst of sadness, he was thankful for Megan, for her clever wits. Megan, I really thank you from the bottom of my heart. You don't have to thank me. I'm willing to do anything for you, she said as she shook her head and continued to tend to his wounds. But I thought you were about to marry Woody, he asked. I don't want to get in your way. Seriously? Megan laughed. Are you going to believe everything he says? When did I say I was going to marry him? Wait, what? Connor gasped in surprise. Did they fight? You must be mistaken, Megan explained. There's no way I'm going to marry him, ever. I don't even love him. The things he said when we were in California were just a toy with you. It's all a mistake? Was Woody just trying to toy with me? But I heard you say that you are his girlfriend from the recording. She stopped what she was doing and finally realized what was going on. She cursed Woody in her heart over a hundred times. She was just trying to get past the security. She never thought that he would record that and show it to Connor. That's just a joke. Don't believe everything you hear, she quickly explained. He just doesn't want us to be together. Woody doesn't want us to be together? Then does that mean Megan wants to be together with me? Even though I'm in a wheelchair? But my legs. I'm scared that I might trouble you for the rest of your life since I can't. The sadness and self-blame could be heard in Connor's voice. He had no confidence in winning over Megan's heart and he did not want to be a burden to her. Megan was trying to hold back and wait for her Prince Charming to confess his feelings, but she'd finally realized that a person like him who was in a unique situation would never do so. She finally realized that she had to take initiative, that there was nothing for the girl to confess first. Mr. Wilson, Megan said as she placed her palm on his chest lightly. Do you still want to know what I was about to tell you when we were in California before the accident happened? Episode 203, A Romantic Confession. What? Connor asked as he was curious from the beginning. I love you, Megan said. That's what I wanted to tell you. I've loved you ever since we met. Only you. He was stunned and did not know how to react. Did she just say she loves me? It was never a one-sided affection. He found himself unable to speak as the happiness came too suddenly. You are not allowed to give up on yourself, she said, holding his hands. I don't care about your legs. What I want is the person you are. That's the most important thing. Even if you can never walk for the rest of your life, I'm willing to act as your walking cane. Wherever you go, I'll follow. Megan raised her head and looked at him gently with eyes filled with love. The sincerity and the warmth in her words. It was the most touching thing that he had ever heard. He could feel his heart skip a beat. It was Megan who had saved him when he was in his darkest moment. She'd given him confidence and the faith to live on. She was like the warm sun, showing a path for him. The heart that had been pushed into despair was pulled back by her as it began to beat wildly. Hey, she nudged as Connor remained silent. Aren't you going to say anything, even after I've confessed? Don't forget, you've already took my first time five years ago. You'll have to take up the responsibility. She held his hands up, vowing never to let them go. Tears were filling Connor's eyes. He turned his hands and grabbed hers as if he was holding the most treasured possession that he'd ever had. I will. 
I will take that responsibility, he said. His deep voice was still attracting, like he was tickling her heart. There were many more things that he wanted to tell her. He wanted to thank her too. He wanted to thank her for choosing him even when he was imperfect. For a person that God had abandoned, he was lucky to have met her. Megan, I will take care of you for the rest of my life, Connor vowed. As long as you remain with me, I'll never let you go, always. She smiled as soon as she heard his reply. His reply represented a promise that would never be broken. He could finally feel the sweetness of life after he'd been living in darkness. It was the love that he'd longed for. Love could be straightforward. It didn't need complicated gifts, nor showing off in front of others. It doesn't even need to be enchanted by sweet talks. One look and a simple sentence could make your significant other understand you. That was what love was about. Connor's nod and reply were sweet, even sweeter than the sweetest melon on earth. Mr. Wilson, what are you going to do about tomorrow? She asked. Even though she was in a good mood, she was still worried about the extraordinary general meeting that would happen the next day. Don't worry, I still have something up my sleeve, he replied. He decided to stop playing a good guy and show Peter what it meant to betray his trust. This is still not the worst case scenario. He felt that he could do anything as long as Megan was by his side. Megan let out a sigh of relief as soon as she saw that Connor had walked out of his despair and had thought of a counter move. Mr. Wilson, sometimes I think that we are both the same, she said with a smile after she'd finished wrapping his knees with bandages. We were both living in a harsh reality, but fortunately, we lucked out. Connor had a brother that would do anything to take over his company, while Megan had a sister who was corrupted to her heart. They were both hurt by the people they loved the most, but they chose to fight against their fate. It's all because I met you, Connor said. All my luck came from you. They were both lucky because they got to meet each other. He stared at her beautiful eyes intensely with his own, which were filled with gratitude and love. Me too. Megan smiled as she grabbed his hands. No matter when, no matter where, no matter how desperate the moment is, don't give up. Because you're not alone anymore. Because you still have me. Thank you. It was Megan who had pulled him up with her gentleness. All of the storms that were surrounding his head were gone as a ray of light shone onto him. He wasn't as down as he used to be anymore and was ready to face the event that would be happening the next day. He looked at her beautiful face, her red lips and shining eyes. Connor could feel his body heating up as he swallowed down his saliva. He wanted to kiss her. He moved slowly towards her as every molecule in his body was telling him to take her lips and taste them. The kiss that she'd given him a few moments ago was too light, so light that he could not taste the full effect of the kiss, but it managed to stir him up. Maybe it was because Connor was staring intensely, but Megan averted her gaze embarrassedly and was about to get up. Yet the guy wrapped his strong arm along her thin waist and pulled her into his arms as he pulled her head in with his bandaged hands. Just like that, Connor planted his lips that were filled with love against hers. It was Megan's turn to be surprised. She felt like she was being kissed by force. As her body was being held by the man, she couldn't move away from him and could only give into the kiss. The kiss was deep and it hurt a little. Just as Megan was trying to catch her breath, Connor took the chance to pry her teeth open with his tongue. The scene that he dreamt of was finally happening. As Connor was kissing the girl of his dreams, his arms tightened around her waist as if he was trying to embed her into his own body. He finally let Megan go when she was about to suffocate. She slid to the ground and sat there trying to catch her breath. 
If not for the pain she was feeling on her lips, she would have thought that she was dreaming. Sorry, I... He apologized as he looked at the girl who was staring at him innocently. There was no way that he could admit that he'd just gone overboard. Megan did not want him to apologize. She was definitely shocked by his sudden kiss. When she first kissed him, it was with restraint. She never thought that the man would suddenly kiss her back. And the kiss was wilder than she ever could have imagined, as if it was about to break every bone in her. She'd always thought of Connor as a warm and gentle kind of man. There was no way she would expect him to be so aggressive when it came to kissing. Megan calmed herself down as she tried to cool her face by swinging her palm as a fan. She knew that her face was very red without looking at herself in the mirror. It was so embarrassing that she couldn't raise her head and look at his eyes anymore. All right, I'm done treating your wounds, she said as she tried to change the awkward atmosphere. Your house is quite messy now. Sit down and stay there while I clean the house. Megan turned and started to sweep the floor. Connor looked at the back of the girl who was working and coughed lightly as his face started to heat up. He licked his own lips, trying to taste the wild kiss with all of his heart. He felt fulfilled, but he also despised himself for taking advantage of the girl who was trying to encourage him. But since Megan was the one who had kissed him first, he had to repay her with a kiss out of courtesy. But with those two kisses, their relationship had changed entirely. Megan was fast with her hands, and the house was clean in a few minutes. She'd placed all the stuff that wasn't broken back to where it used to be and threw out everything that couldn't be used anymore. Mr. Wilson, I think you'll have to get a new table and a few lamps, Megan said as she came back from throwing the last garbage out. Okay, Connor replied as he raised his bandaged hands up. Why don't you help me choose? Sure thing. Leave it to me, she said. I will buy them online, but before that, you'll have to clean yourself up and change into a new set of clothes, all right? Yeah. Connor would now always agree to anything Megan would say. No matter how trivial the things were, it would always be important as long as he did it with her. Megan carried him back to his wheelchair and pushed him into the bathroom. She was about to prepare a hot bath for Connor when he remembered that he would have a hard time removing his clothes. I'll just simply wipe my body, Connor suggested. I'll ask James to help me shower later. Okay. Megan respected his decision, as she would also feel embarrassed if Connor were to remove all of his clothes. She dipped a towel into the hot water and helped him clean the blood off of his face. She later wiped his muscular body clean while trying to avoid the wounds on his knees. She was thorough, yet gentle. Connor closed his eyes to enjoy the moment. As Megan's fingers touched his body occasionally, he would feel a current running through him. Megan's face was already as red as a tomato when she'd finished wiping his body clean. I'll go get you some new clothes, she said, throwing the towel down and running out of the bathroom. She was afraid that she might pounce at him if she stayed in there any longer with his naked body exposed. Connor lowered his head and looked at his thing between his legs. It was already standing up high and mighty. The hell? My body is not listening to me. Episode 204, Staring at Him. Is she embarrassed because she saw this? Connor asked himself. Shit, this is going to leave a bad impression on her. Just as he was cursing at himself, Megan returned with a new set of clothes. She'd brought him a button-down shirt because of the state of his hands. Connor put on the white shirt, and it instantly made him look more attractive. Megan helped him button his shirt, leaving the top two unbuttoned. Very charming, she complimented after taking two steps back. Thank you, he smiled. Her compliment was even sweeter than candy. He was feeling much better. Even the pain of his wounds had lessened. 
Have you eaten? Megan asked as she pushed him out of the bathroom, but did not wait for him to reply. There's an 80% chance that you haven't. Why don't we eat together? Okay. Connor nodded happily as he missed her foods. She pushed him back to the living room, got a glass of water for him, and went into the kitchen. She opened the fridge only to find just a few ingredients left in it. Mr. Wilson, why don't we go to my place? Megan asked. There are more ingredients there. Sure thing, Connor replied. I'll go wherever you tell me to, even if it's hell. Megan smiled at him and pushed him through the crystal door and into room 102. She helped him to the couch and went into her own kitchen. After she'd finished cooking, she went to the living room to call for Connor only to find him sleeping on the couch. Mr. Megan wanted to wake him but did not do so. She understood that he was under immense pressure and had been rushing in and out of the hospital for the past few days. She decided to let him sleep as much as he wanted. She went into her room and found a blanket for him. She laid the blanket over him and kneeled beside him, looking at him with her gentle eyes. She could only stare at his handsome face without any worries when he was asleep. Even though Connor was thoroughly spent, it still did not mask his charming face. Megan reached out her fingers and touched his eyebrows. He's really good looking. It would be best if I could look at him every day. She could feel her eyelids getting heavier as she appreciated the charming man in front of her. As the sky became darker and the street lamps turned on, the house remained dark. Connor was having a nightmare. It was a reflection of the life that he'd been having up until then. He found himself deserted in the wilderness, and the last person to leave him alone was Megan. I'm leaving, Mr. Wilson, Megan said as she cried. Where are you going? Are you going to leave me alone too? He asked in pain. It was his first time to see her in such a saddened state. Why should I stay? Did you ever care for me? What am I to you? In the dream, Megan was standing a few meters away from him. Her hair covered half of her face as the wind blew, masking her sadness. He had no idea how to respond to her question. Confessing his own feelings had never been something he was good at. Because of his hesitation, disappointment could be seen in Megan's eyes. She did not say anything and slowly turned away. Connor looked at her fading back and finally lost him. Megan, don't go, please, he shouted. You're too important to me. I don't know how to live without you. Megan. He woke up from his dream, his heart beating faster than a bullet as his sweat had soaked through his white shirt. Megan, don't leave me, he mumbled. He was already at his limit. He was about to break down from the fear of losing Megan. Suddenly, the lights turned on and lit the whole room up. Connor squinted and turned to see a thin girl standing near the light switch smiling at him. Megan, you're still here? Connor asked as he wiped the tears from his face. Of course I am, she smiled. This is my house. Megan had also fallen asleep. It was Connor's mumbling that woke her up. She'd guessed that he was having a nightmare and went to turn on the lights. Mr. Wilson, what were you saying just now? She asked with a smile as she slowly walked towards him. Can you repeat that again? He still had a few memories of the dream he'd had and still remembered how he'd begged for Megan to stay. There was no way that he could say that out loud in front of her now that he was awake. What? What did I say just now? He asked and began to act like an idiot. Megan rested her arms and head beside him and looked at him with her starry eyes. Don't you remember? She joked. You were calling my name, begging me not to leave you, and saying that I'm important to you. Megan regretted not recording his dream talk to replay it for him to hear. In her heart, she was happy. Even if Connor was saying those things because he was dreaming, it was still worth it to hear those words come from his mouth. Connor's face reddened. It was both awkward and embarrassing. I'm just joking, 
She laughed as she tried to help him with his awkwardness. But I'm not joking at all, Connor said. Those were her true feelings, and there was no way that he was joking about it. I got it. Megan smiled and got up. Now that you're awake, I'll go heat up the food. In just a few minutes, she placed what was supposed to have been lunch on the table as their dinner. She went back to the living room and pushed Connor to the dining table. Megan filled a bowl with rice, picked up a few vegetables with her chopsticks, and was about to feed Connor when he stopped her without thinking. I can eat on my own. If you can pick your own chopsticks up, Megan smiled. Oh, Connor looked at his bandaged hands. I'll feed you. She spooned up a spoon of rice and placed the vegetables on top. Yet, Connor did not open his mouth even when the food was already next to it. Come on, don't be embarrassed about it, Megan laughed. If you don't want to eat with a spoon, how about I feed you with my mouth? After hearing what she had said, Connor flushed in embarrassment. He immediately opened his mouth and ate the food on the spoon, swallowing it down without chewing in his haste. <clears throat> He ate too fast and choked on the food. He couldn't stop coughing. Hey, slow down. See, you're choking now. She thumped on his back to help him clear his throat, then gave him a sip of water. Sorry. He was sorry for his clumsiness. If she hadn't said that she was going to feed him directly with her mouth, he wouldn't have choked. He sighed to himself inwardly. This girl could easily cause him to lose control. Megan snickered. She realized that he really was sensitive. This man was so cute whenever he was shy. But on the other hand, was she being too mischievous? Was she behaving anything like a graceful lady? After he stopped coughing, Megan encouraged him as she continued to feed him. Eat more, Mr. Wilson. You'll only have energy when you eat enough. You still have a hard battle to fight tomorrow. Yes, there was a hard battle waiting for him tomorrow. As Connor thought of that, he began to eat in big mouthfuls, taking his meal seriously. After dinner, Megan sent him back to his apartment. James had come over, so she went back to her apartment. At night, Megan lay on her bed too excited to sleep. Her heart thumped wildly in her chest as she replayed the way Connor had kissed her passionately earlier in the day in her mind. On the bedside table, the screen of her mobile phone lit up. Megan picked it up and looked at the screen. It was her daughter, Alice. Hello? Megan said softly after accepting the call. The little girl's tender and childish voice came over the phone. Mom, are you done shooting? Have you eaten yet? Are you sleeping yet? The little girl blurted all three questions in one breath. It just showed how much she cared for her mother. Megan felt her heart melting with her warmness. She replied, Yeah, I'm done with today's shoot, and I'm about to go sleep. Are you in bed now? No. Baby has been waiting for your call. Why didn't you call me? The little girl asked in her babyish voice, but Megan could hear the disappointment in her tone. She remembered she had promised her daughter that she would call her after she was done filming today, but had forgotten to do so because she had to take care of Connor. She felt really sorry and could not help but feel remorse deeply. I'm so sorry. Mommy was too busy and forgot. Well, all right. Baby can forgive you, but on one condition. Did she hear that right? The kid actually wanted to discuss terms with her? So young, yet already so shrewd. Where had she learned that from? Megan turned to lie on her other side, passing her mobile phone to her other hand. Okay, what conditions? She said lazily. Take me to see Uncle Dimples, the little girl said in a serious tone over the phone. Okay, Megan was impressed. How could she not be? Wasn't this a special telepathy-like connection between father and daughter? Or was it because blood runs thicker than water? 
Ever since her daughter had met Connor, she would always whine about wanting to see him. Megan thought that the little girl would forget about him after not seeing him for a long time, yet she still remembered him all this while. Tell me, why must you want to see Uncle Dimples? Megan decided to play along. Baby has something very important to tell Uncle Dimples. The little girl's tone was especially serious. Megan could picture her cute little face becoming all serious. It must be very funny to see. What do you want to tell him? Can you tell mommy? Megan pressed on. No, it's a secret between me and Uncle Dimples. In reality, Megan was the one who did not understand Alice. Although Alice was young, she had a precocious mind and already had her own ideas. She had already found her goal. Episode 205, Mommy's Sweet Baby Girl. She had found her goal. She wanted to buy the best daddy in the world, and that candidate was Uncle Dimples. Megan felt like laughing, but she continued to play along, pretending to cry. Oh, you and Uncle Dimples are already sharing secrets. Don't you love me anymore? Boo-hoo-hoo. Mommy is so miserable. There was a moment of silence on the other side of the call. Finally, the little girl felt sorry for her mother and gave in. Mommy, please don't cry. Baby will tell you now. Baby wanted to see Uncle Dimples because Baby wanted to buy him and bring him home for you. Huh? Her daughter's words struck her like lightning. She asked again, Baby, do you really want to buy Uncle Dimples? Yeah, Uncle Dimples is the gentlest and kindest man I've ever seen. He is the most suitable person to become Baby's daddy. Megan was very surprised. She didn't think that her daughter strongly believed in Connor. The little girl had apparently reserved the post of her daddy for him. For a moment, she almost blurted out and told her daughter that Uncle Dimples was her real father. In fact, the other reason why Alice liked Connor was that she liked his dimples. His dimples were just like hers and it made her feel close to him. Megan thought that her daughter was only being naive. She asked again, Why do you think Uncle Dimples is good? Are you not bothered by his legs? There was a pause at the other end. Then, decisively and firmly, the little girl said, Uncle Dimples will definitely learn to walk. Megan snorted a laugh, amused by the little girl's naivety. If Alice was by her side, she would have immediately hugged her and showered her with kisses. She was mommy's sweet baby girl, all right. And the man her baby girl liked was also the one she liked, too. Isn't that great? At the same time, Megan deeply believed that a child's mind is pure and innocent. They always meant it when they said what they like or dislike. Their opinions were rarely affected by external conditions. Perhaps Alice saw Connor as a perfect father. It had nothing to do with his wheelchair. At the end of the conversation, Megan told her daughter to wait patiently for a few more days. After she had settled her work, she would take her to see Uncle Dimples. After hanging up the call, Megan let out a long sigh of relief. She then closed her eyes, the image of Connor appearing in her mind. She could imagine the three of them being together as a happy family. How wonderful that would be. She really looked forward to that. When would be a good time to tell him about Alice? Perhaps she should at least wait until after tomorrow, after dealing with the trouble in Wilson Entertainment. She wondered what Connor had come up with. How was he going to deal with Peter tomorrow? The next day, in the Wilson Entertainment Building, an extraordinary general meeting was being held at the conference center. Shareholders of Wilson Entertainment sat at both sides of the long table while Peter sat at the head of the table. While the meeting had yet to begin, the shareholders whispered and murmured amongst themselves, speculating about the purpose of the meeting. Some of the major shareholders had been persuaded by Peter, and they would definitely vote for him during the voting process. There was also a small number who were loyal to Connor and Bernard, ones which he had not been able to entice. 
but those people were only a small part of the shareholder group. There weren't enough of them to actually pose a threat to him. Peter's secretary was the host of the meeting. He stood up and turned to face everyone. Good day, everyone. As you all know, the Wilson family is going through troubled times at the moment, and a new capable leader must be selected to carry the company on. Everybody knows the physical condition of our President Connor. He has been absent from his duties for a long time due to his injuries, and it is not known whether he will return to Wilson. So, for the sake of Wilson's development and future, I would like to invite every one of you to re-elect someone for the post of president today. He had made it sound as though they were going to re-elect a new president, but in fact, the real aim was to remove the current president. A wave of murmuring came from the attendees down the table. The shareholders who were supporting Connor had objections and were expressing their disapproval of the re-election. Peter sat at the head of the table, silent as he watched those who were voicing their disapproval. Very well. He shall remember those who were opposing. Once he became president, they would be the first to be fired. His secretary continued, Forced by such circumstances, Wilson Entertainment is in need of someone capable to take charge and lead the company forward. If the company continues to be this disorganized, I believe that in one or two years, Wilson will collapse on its own without interference from the outside world. Is this the outcome that everyone wants to see? While the secretary was still explaining, someone barged into the conference room. It was none other than the director of Wilson Entertainment's Public Relations Department, Layla. Furious, she strode in towards Peter and jabbed a finger at his nose. Peter, what do you think you're doing? Are you trying to remove Connor by holding this general meeting? In the past few days, Layla had been going back and forth between the hospital and the company. She had been too busy to realize what was going on. But she had sensed that something was wrong with the company. If the staff from her department hadn't informed her, she wouldn't have learned that Peter was holding a general meeting without the consent of her grandfather, father, and brother. Director Wilson, you are not supposed to be here. Leave, Peter ordered her with a voice that sounded as if it held the authority of a president. No, I'm not leaving. Peter, you better have a good explanation. Is this how you handle affairs? Though Grandpa and my father are not here, my brother is still around. Since when was it your turn to become so rampant? Who do you think you are? Layla placed her hands on her hips, showing off her superiority over Peter. After all, unlike him, she was a legitimate child of the family. She was not going to let them have this meeting in peace. Mind your words, Layla. I am currently the vice president of Wilson and presently carrying out the president's duties. If I am not qualified, who else is? Peter narrowed his dark eyes as he stared at Layla. His eyes were full of warning. She was not afraid of him. She pointed at his nose and cursed. You, you treacherous man, you're just like a usurper from feudal times, and you have the savage heart of a wolf. I knew you were up to something rotten. Father is in a coma. Grandpa is hospitalized and Connor is disabled. Is this how you plan to usurp power while they're down and at a disadvantage? Layla, there's no place for your words here. Peter sneered, then immediately decreed, Layla, from this day, you're fired. Peter, you dare fire me? 
Layla glared at him furiously. Peter's face was expressionless. There was a flash of hatred in his eyes as he ordered his staff, dragged this irrelevant woman out of the company. Peter's men promptly grabbed hold of Layla's arms and dragged her out of the conference center. Layla continued to curse as she struggled to free herself on the way out. Peter, you are a bastard. You're not human. The door of the conference room once again slammed shut, and silence returned to the room. Peter said to his secretary, continue the meeting. His eyes swept down the table, then added, Whoever is displeased, you're welcome to emulate Director Wilson. They all exchanged looks, but no one dared to say anything. They were afraid of losing their seats in the company. They had witnessed Peter's merciless act. He had even dared to execute his own family members. Was there anything else that he couldn't do? The meeting continued. Those who were on Peter's side began to voice their support and demanded to re-elect a new president. At this point of the meeting, the voices of the opposition were overwhelmed and ignored as the voting began. Other than the current president, Connor, Peter was the only other candidate on the candidates list. The objective was very clear. It was either they re-elect Connor or promote Peter as the new president. If they wanted a new president other than Connor, they could only vote for Peter. There were no other alternatives. This was clearly Peter's aim. He had always been an arbitrary person. The votes were quickly tallied, and the results were ready to be released. The people who supported Connor stood by their decision and voted for his reappointment. Those who were persuaded by Peter voted for him as the new president. Peter remained impassive and expressionless. He was good at hiding his own emotions. At this moment, his heart was secretly filling with glee in anticipation of his guaranteed victory. Soon, his goal was going to be realized, and he would be able to stomp Connor under his feet. As he thought of this, he could not help but feel very excited. After confirming the vote count, Peter's secretary began to announce the results. According to the voting results, I hereby announce the winner is... Before he could announce the winner, there was a loud clatter as the door of the conference center was thrown open. Everyone turned their heads at the door and saw a woman wheeling Connor steadily into the room. Everyone was stunned. Their president has come? That's right. Connor had arrived. He appeared in the conference room, accompanied by Megan. Today, he wore a jet black handmade suit. His white shirt under his coat was neat and crisply ironed, and his twilled tie was tucked neatly under the neckline of his suit. He looked stern. His hair was well-groomed and smartly styled. He carried a frosty look on his devilishly handsome face, his eyes sharp and bright under his thick, dark eyebrows. He looked very regal and domineering. Though he was sitting in a wheelchair, he sat with his back straight and strong and his broad chest lifted, bringing out his inner nobility and exuding an air that he was evidently different from everyone else. When he entered the conference room, Peter was just as shocked as everyone else. He thought that Connor would definitely not come today. He thought that he had struck a fatal blow to him. He thought he had become very depressed and miserable. However, Connor was in good spirits as he appeared in front of everyone. Peter was dumbstruck. Why didn't he look like he was in despair? Was his grief yesterday only an act? Could it be that Connor was the one who had outplayed him? Peter stared at Connor in astonishment. He hated that he could not stare a dagger through him. He hated that he had come. He hated that he had appeared. Since Connor had come, today's motion to remove him would definitely fail. Peter was only one step away from power. 
and yet that goal was about to fall apart in front of his eyes. He was not willing to give up without a fight. Connor was already in front of Peter. He shifted his eyes from his face down to the table. Aren't you all holding a meeting? Carry on. Connor's tone was casual, but for some reason, Peter's secretary was beginning to have stage fright. It was his turn to continue announcing the results of the voting, but he could not say a single word. He could only look at Peter nervously. Peter despised Connor to death. But in front of public eyes, he had to be put on the act of a caring brother. Connor, why have you come suddenly? Are you feeling better? He gave him a ghost of a smile. Thanks to your blessings, brother. I'm still alive for now. Peter could hear in his tone that Connor was deliberately provoking him. Peter's face was becoming a bit chagrined. He glanced at Connor as he tried to figure out his intentions. He looked at the way his younger cousin brother had dressed himself. So formal with those white gloves. What is his next move? Is he going to reclaim the post of president? Peter was not the only one who was mulling over the matter. Everyone else in the room was wondering too. What are they going to do next? Are the two brothers going to quarrel over the president's post?